फ्रेंड्स गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई लाइक टू ग्रीट प्रेसिडेंट साहित्य अकेडमी श्री सुनील गंगोपाध्याय एंड ऑल्सो दि अग्रहार कृष्णमूर्ति एंड ऑल द राइटर्स इंटेलेक्चुअल्स एंड बुक लवर्स friends i am indeed happy to deliver the samachar lecture of sahitya academy at new delhi organized as a part of annual festival of letters my greetings to all of you all can you hear me yes. okay. and uh, the i have selected a topic Uh, i'm glad to know of the projects being organized i was reading the website and the sahitya academy for spreading indian literature to various parts of the country and the world and particularly among the youth it's a beautiful thoughts i am of the view that whatever be the pursuit of the youth humanities and literature must be part of the curriculum the interpretation of literature with our life experience is continuous and literature enriches the mind eternally while appreciating your efforts let me suggest few points for your consideration this is for academy sahitya academy can we use the broadcasting medium more effectively in spreading the literature among public this is one suggestion the second even professional institutions like engineering medicine may be encouraged to possess sufficient copies of literature and i have been encouraging home libraries for young people to be facilitated by parents and elders uh, you may encourage to collect a good books of literature i am going to talk about it can we have a continuing education in education in literature which may be organized particularly using the distance education Uh, finally can we organize prestigious competition schemes for youth to do research on literature these are the few suggestion i thought giving after seeing your website friends keeping the task of uh, sahitya academy in mind i have designed a samachar lecture with a title i have changed the title i hope you don't mind i changed the title because i saw i am going to talk the writers so something connected with i should talk that's why i changed the subject so i have designed the samachar lecture with the title a journey into knowledge world a journey into a knowledge world that's the topic i have selected uh, the the journey to knowledge world has multiple components of experiences and sometime inspiration derived from the books and poems and people is mine and sometime from outside also uh, friends let me narrate an incident relating a great books which gives knowledge and also at times become a friend to meet emergency the same book can meet emergency also i am going to narrate a personal experience very rarely i have shared this i thought of sharing with you when i was studying long long ago nearly half a century ago when i was studying in madras institute of technology krompat chennai during 1954 57 i think it was the second year of my course in december 1955 nearly 55 years back many of you may not be in idea form when all my classmates are away for the vacation because december my classmates are all in different parts of the country they have gone but i had not prepared well for one subject i decided to stay back in the hostel for preparing my forthcoming exam during this vacation one day i got a trunk call from my brother la ahmed jalaluddin saying that rameshwaram was severely hit by a cyclone and my parents decided to see me immediately we lost all all our boats at that time i was keen to go to rameshwaram immediately look up my parents at home uh, being the end of the month i was i was left with no money 
There was no time for my family to send the money because the telegraphic system is not functioning because of the cyclone. I was thinking what I should do to arrange the money for my travel. I had, I don't know how many of you this experience you will have, I had only one wealth left with me at that time. This was the precious book presented to me by Dr. Lechunasai Mudaliyar, Chairman Governing Council of Madras Institute of Technology. The name of the book for my excellent performance in the subject aerodynamics during my second year of MIT. The book was, it's a very prestigious book, the book was Theory of Elasticity, written by Timur Shango and Goodyear, costing in those days, 1955, 400 rupees at that time. Because of price money, I got it. It was a very difficult decision for me to sell the book, which I got as a prize for my performance. But since I needed minimum rupees 60 to go to my native place, I took an electric train from Krompet and reached Moore Market. In those days, Moore Market was there, uh, where near Central Station. Those days, Moore Market was a new or a new books at any reasonable cost you can get. And also you can sell off your own books. Earlier, I have purchased a second-hand book, Light from Many Lamps, for a just for rupees 20, which has become a guiding soul for my life throughout. The book stall where I purchased Light from Many Lamps was run by a pious Brahmin with a traditional tuft. I approached him and told him that I have a book. I needed to sell the book so that I can get sufficient money for emergency travel hometown. He asked me to show the book and asked me how much money I need. I told him I need minimum rupees 60, though I felt he might give much less. He saw the book, he opened the book and read the first page and found that it was first prize given to me by Professor Lechner Swami Mudaliyar. Then by Chancellor Madras University, he immediately told me that he is not going to buy the book. I was worried <laughs> that I may not get anything. But he told me, since it was a present from Professor Lechner Swami Mudaliyar, no, he's a very famous vice chancellor. He is going to give me rupees 60 and will keep the book with him till I come back, return rupees 60. A great human being. I was very happy that one great soul was trying to help me in the difficult situation and also could understand my interest in studies. I got the money, went to Rameshwaram, uh, saw the nature's fury, but all my thoughts were on getting the back the book. As soon as I returned from Rameshwaram, I went to the Moor market. It is not existing now, it's gone. Moore Market paid the money and got back the book from the noble shopkeeper and as promised. After that, I was very happy. Uh, it was an experience like a mother seeing her son after who had been lost for some time. A book, you know, book always gives knowledge. But in my case, at that time, book can also become a wealth during an emergency. <laughs> Friends, now I am going to talk to you. One book, now every one of us will have some experience. Some book may, get, may make a big influence. And for me, the same Moor Market, same Moor Market, I purchased a second. In those days, I can't buy a full cost book. So coming into contact with a good book and possessing it is indeed an enriched experience in life. Book becomes a permanent companion. As sometimes they are born before us and they guide us during our life journey and continue for many generations. I, as told you earlier, I had bought the book Light from Many Lamps in the year 1953 from a old bookstore in Moor Market, Chennai. The editor of the book is Watson Lillian Erchila. This book was my close friend and a companion for over five decades. The book was so much used, it had to be bound again and again. Whenever there is a problem, the book wipes away the tears based on the experience of great minds. 
When the happiness overwhelms me, the book again softly touches the mind and brings about a balanced thinking. I have realized the importance of the book again when a friend of mine who is in the judiciary presented me with a new edition of the same book in the year 2004. He told me that the best present he could offer me was this book. My, maybe 50 years from now, the same book might take a new avatar. Basically, books are eternal. Some of you friends are the creators of great books and translators, translation many languages, which will enrich the society, present and future. So I, I value your presence here. Friends, quite often, you know, I get emails, letters, questions from the youth whom I meet on my visits to various parts of the country. The overwhelming question from them are, which are the books that are your real companions? What is the book that you are reading currently? This is the type of question young fellows ask. I have met so far 11 million youth last one decade, all below 17. I told them that I cherish reading certain areas of, certain areas of the book. The ones they, that are enjoyed most, the ones that enjoyed most are Man the Unknown by Dr. Alexis Carroll, a doctor turned philosopher and a Nobel laureate. This book highlights how a mind and body have both to be treated as an integrated system. Our doctors treated only body, not the mind. You cannot treat one and ignore the other. In particular, youth who dream of becoming doctors and healthcare designer should read this book. They will learn that the human body is not a mechanical system. It's a very intelligent organism with the most intricate and sensitive feedback system. The human system is indeed an integrated package made of psychological and physiological systems. The second book which I adore and venerate is Thiruvalluvar's Thirukural, uh, which provides an excellent code of contact for life which is beyond national, linguistic, religious, and cultural boundaries. You know, this one book I'm doing research now, you know, th there are 1,330 couplets, uh, 2,000 years, 2,200 years back written by the author. And nowhere this saint poet says which country he belongs to. At nowhere he talks about his mother tongue. At nowhere he talks about any religion or culture. He is a very noble mind. In 2,200 years back, a person can write such a book beyond nation, beyond culture, beyond religion. Today, when I see that, that book is a classic. That's why I adore that book. Friends, I meet many authors and share their knowledge and their experience in writing books. Some of the books, which attracted my attention were five minds of the future. Five minds, normally we talk about one mind. Eh? He talks about every one of us has got five minds of the future by Howard Garner, and this is another book in, uh, I read quite often. Everyday Greatness by Stephen R. Conway, Dave, and then Mark, and then the another book is by Venkatraman, G. Venkatraman, Microcosm and Macrocosm, Understanding the Genome by George, and Parallel World of Michio Kaku. Many of these books take you to the world of experiences, imagination, exploration, in addition to the world of reality. Now, friends, I want to convey the role of others in human lives. Many of you here in this audience might have a similar experience with a particular book or books. Others of the books play a very important role in human lives. A good book from an author is a great knowledge and wealth for many generations. As sometimes a book may not inspire the reader during the author's lifetime. But the importance of book message becomes more and more clear as the time passes and its value is realized by later generation of the society. Then the, then the book starts shining. Of course, there are some classics which shine continuously forever. Friends, I'm sure many of you belong to that creed, who are the creators of the book and poetries for societal transformation of today and tomorrow. So I'm very happy in your company. Friends, now I am going to talk to you something which I experienced in 2005 when I was the president. 
I visited the Northeast, quite often I used to visit Northeast at Seven as a press, five times visited. In 2005, when I visited as a president, Northeastern state, like Sikkim, Assam, Meghalaya, and Mizoram, I had an occasion to meet many literary personalities and thinkers of Northeastern languages. Very rarely we, we do this exercise. They have contributed many literary works, including the form of a cultural programs. I was moved to see a unique musical and dance performance in Mizoram. Also in Sikkim, I saw a fusion of culture of three groups of people, namely Nepali, uh, Bhutias, and Lepchas in the integrated society. The music and dance were so powerful and beautiful that all of us were very happy to see the unity of minds and how these multicultures get fused when the normal practice seemed to be a project, project the difference prevalent in the society. One of the incidents that reflect the cultural peak of the region happened to, happened to me at Mizoram. Normally, no aircraft takes off from Aizwal, the capital of Mizoram, after 16 and hours in the evening because of the hilly region. Since I had work in Aizwal up to 21 and hours, 9 o'clock p.m., I had to return to Delhi that very night. Our Air Force organized my departure from Aizwal at that late hour with certain temporary night takeoff facilities. I reached the airport with my team, then the governor, chief minister, other officials joined us. I saw an impressive scene unfolding in the midst of the darkness with only the aircraft lights on. Near the aircraft and the safe distance, a choir group was in attendance with musical instruments. As soon as they saw me, they gave a beautiful, lovely farewell song composed by Miso poet Rukunga. The poem is Rukunga, poet name. The po poem is titled The World of Parting. The World of Parting. Every one of us experienced some time. The World of Parting goes like this Now we part with heavy and painful heart. Now we part with heavy and painful heart. The world we live in has been destined for parting. But the Heavenly Father above, but we are destined for a better world than this, a city eternal where we will never know painful partings. This is the poem of Bhagunga. I was touched by the variety of Indian panorama, the emotional content of the tune, cultural diversity, and unity of minds in the vast land of ours and the literary power of other. Friends, now I am going to share with you some personal experience. Friends, let me share with you a beautiful story of a hundred-year-old tree in my home, 10 Rajaji Mark, here in Delhi. The name of the tree is Arjuna, while botanically is called Terminalija, Terminalija. The tree, is bio, my, the, the tree is my biodiversity friend. I daily walk about one and a half hours, early morning and night in my home. My tree friend every day reveals something new. Whenever I walk, you can ask me one single tree of 100 years old. Can it become a living post for the biodiversity? I say firmly, yes. The age of the tree and my parents are almost the same. My parents lived 103 years. The age of the tree and my parents are almost the same. My father lived 103 years and my mother 90 plus. My tall friend Arjuna, with his hundreds of branches in every April to my sadness, loses all the leaves and becomes barren in April. Then to my joy within a month, again the tree blossoms with more vigor and fresh green leaves and colorful flowers which make it look even mightier. There are hundreds of branches in the tree. There is one branch, when I observe closely, difficult to locate. As it is in the dense interior region of the tree, on that branch I saw a unique sight. Thousands of thousands of working honeybees have built a hive in a big size, large size. Many parts of the Arjuna, the tree, have become the habitat for minas, sparrows, black crows, cuckoos, and topmost branches occupied with the beautiful parrots. There also there's a caste system. Parent fuller will be always in the topmost. Occasionally, the hornbill visits uh, them all joined together, drive away this unique species. Every day one scene I observe is how all birds join together against one enemy that is eagle troop to protect their young ones. My tree gives all seasons a beautiful shadows, living beings. Just three months back, I observed a scene at the root 
and the base region of the tree densely full of plants and flower garden. I have seen many times pe peacocks dancing in number around the tree. Then the peahen select inside the bush around the tree a choice for laying seven to ten eggs and the product in continuation for 45 days, sitting softly over the egg, giving warmth and production. Then the seven nestlings, the baby birds started roaming all around the tree in protection of the mother. This life cycle we see every year. Now friends, don't you think I have a great tree? It's my friend, my diversity friend, and also friend of young. I composed a poem. I'm not going to recite the poem, it's a big poem. I composed a poem dedicated to Arjuna, my home tree. I asked my tree, I asked my tree, what is your mission? Hundred years has spent, what's your mission? You may like to hear the great answer my home tree gave me, conclusion I'm giving you. Now you question, now you question Kalam, what is my mission? Mission of hundred years of my life. You're asking, my mission I enjoy. The, the tree says, my mission, I enjoy giving what all I have. I share flower and honey, give a board for hundreds of birds. I give and give so I remain young and happy always. Amen. So this tree, if you are interested, you can come and see. I will show you the tree, okay? <laughs> but right month to come is June, July. Now, now friends, each man by himself is a bold. Continents and countries are not just the world, but each man by himself or woman is a world. It means that the whole world is represented, every one of us, with varying sequence of atoms, and thus each atom represents the whole world. Here, I am going to, I am, I am reminded of a prayer song, a prayer written by Mahagavi Bardiyar, Subramanya Bardiyar, as Saraswati Vandana, a Panjali's Sabadam. Panjali Sabadam is epic. He has, he has composed a poem, Panjali Sabadam. In that introduction comes Saraswati Vandanam. And Bharati's beautiful poetry reads like this. Nobody, uh, very rarely this is recited. But it's a beautiful poem. I'm going to recite. Ida Indri, Anukkalallam Sulalumana, Iyal Nool Isaital Gettum, Ida Indri Kadrigalallam Sulalumana, Vanular Yambukandrar, Ida Indri Tholir Burizal, Ulakin Idai Purkallam Yerkaya, this is the poem. I give the translation. This means, you know, the Bardia, the poet has become a physicist. This means the physicist climbs, the poem meaning of it. This means the physicist climbs atoms and particles are always on orbital, orb, orbital motion. Astronomers claim every planet and their star galaxies are in constant motion. You see how a poet has observed. If, if, if perpetual motion to be the nature of things all around us, O oh Goddess of Learning Saraswati, kindly bless, bless human mind also to work as vigorously as ever like our planets. Yes. So friends, now I am going to talk about a small library I have got in my home, okay? I have always found a great knowledge and happiness in the company of books. I have established my own home library for this last uh, nearly, uh, say, 50 years work. Uh, I have established my own home library covering books from a variety of topics and different languages. Over time, the collection has grown to more than about 5,000 books of topics like spirituality, science, governance, history, geography, literature, and management. I regard my library as my most valued possession and the moment spent there as one of the most enriching and cherished ones. Friends, here I would like to narrate an experience. On 11th August 2009, I was participating in a valedictory function of the Book Fair Festival somewhere in the southern part of India. I was astonished to see the audience assembled there. It was more than two lakh people, parents and teachers, uh, then um, students, about two lakh people, young and experienced parent, teacher, leader from various walks of life. When I saw the gathering at a different generation, I suggested the necessity of having home library and administered the following oath. The entire gathering took the oath with bubbling enthusiasm. Would you like to take? Yes. Eh? 
Would you like to take? You don't mind? Or you are too big? No, no, you take it. Today onwards, today onwards, you are not taking food lunch. Today onwards, I will start a home library with 20 books and out of which 10 books will be children books. Now, my daughter, my daughter, my daughter and son will enlarge in this home library with 200 books. Okay. My grandchildren will lead a great home library, will lead a great home library to make it 2,000 books. I consider our library is a lifelong treasure and the precious property of our family. We will spend at least one hour at home library, study along with our family members. This would be a great example to the children, okay? You all agree? Friends, in next area, next area, I would like to say that, dear young friend, I'm sure, Many, many of the prize-winning books of the Sahitya Academy will become the greatest wealth of the home library for transforming young Indian minds into Mahavidwans, Maha-engineers, Mahanidyans, Mahan scientists, Mahan grooms, Mahan writers, and Mahan leaders. Okay, sir. In conclusion, uh, friends, while concluding, I will like to discuss about the children literature. During the last decade, I have met more than 11 million children and youth from all parts of the country, rural and urban, from different regions of the world, develop and developing. I believe the ignited mind of the youth is the most powerful resource on the earth, above the earth, and under the earth. The energy and enthusiasm of the youth give the experience and the vision for life and the responsibility to leave a legacy and they can be proud of. I have been inspired by the learning pattern of children by studying the childhood of many great minds who have established themselves in various walks of life, inspiring questions from children are thought-provoking. Inspiring questions from children are thought-provoking. I have a common pattern. Let me uh, say a few knowledge sources available for urban children definitely should be made available in the form of electronic content or children's book in the rural children who aspire for knowledge in large members. If these are the rural children wants, the library should be there with whatever knowledge go to the urban people. Children have their unique interests with creative minds. Hence, our education, both formal and informal, have to nurture and grow the creativity among the children through quality books. Children learn through environment, family, and neighborhood. For example, when they see their parents or teachers reading books, they also develop interest in reading. If the parents and teachers discuss books with them, it adds flip to their own interest. The children have to grow in an environment of learning skills value system, sports, caring for family, civic responsibility, mental and physical robustness. Children need to be encouraged to ask questions. Questions have to be answered with their patience and knowledge so that minds of children are, are opened up and their thinking is not shut off. The authors of the book assembled here may like to consider depicting such scenes in family and school environment and the lives of a good minds. A child in Jammu and Kashmir may read a book about Rameshwaram and a visit there and vice versa. When the children from different countries meet, I notice one aspect that makes them familiar with each other are the books they can relate to each other. This can be achieved by the authors through writing books with global themes. This will, uh, this will take the youth of our nation uh, through the journey of a knowledge world which is vital for India to, uh, to realize its vision of transforming into an economically developed nation. My best wishes to all the members of the Sahitya Academy for success in the mission of promoting enriched flower and cherished reading habit among the citizens of the country. May God bless you all, friends. So friends, I can, if chairman permits, I can ask questions. Uh, they can ask me questions. Okay? Okay. No question? Yes, sir.
No, get up, get up and speak. Chetil, eh? Chai. Always, you know, human beings, they are continuously they are learning. Okay. As long as you have got a learning capacity and the intention to learn, you will be always young and child. Okay. Okay, okay. I understood. You are under. You don't need to give further, sir. I understood your question. It is like this: high technology. What is needed for the? You take one one thing. Yeah, mobile telephone. Okay. Yeah, mobile telephone. Now the mobile telephone comes out of a product of a high technology. Okay. You can't help. It is a high technology. But irrespective of the high technology, today 660% of Indians have got a mobile. Whether milkman or a farmer or anybody can have today, or a fisherman in the in the boat he can have. So this is a very important tool. Even though high technology you can't reject it, okay? You understand? And the next one, the low technology. There are many. For example, in farming, I saw the if you use the organic organic fertilizers. Uh, you will find the land is enriched. Okay, land is enriched, even though it's a so-called low technology. The organic farming is very important for our farmers to keep a good quality food. Okay, for for health and also to enrich the soil. So that's the answer. Okay. No, no, no. Only only one question. Only only one question. No, no. Only one question. By the way, only one question of course. Because otherwise, if I ask two two questions, then to midnight only I will go. <laughs> okay. Yes. My poem, eh? Huh? Are you ready? Yes. Okay. So it is. It is like this. You know, I went and addressed the parliament. Okay, when I was the president. All the members were there. Seven hundred and fifty Rajya Sabha, Lok Sabha members were all there. I was thinking previous night what to talk to them. You know, this is I have to address 40 page address. Okay, that is the economy, finance, finance bill about what is the what is the mission of the government. I have to talk. So what I will talk? I was asking myself. I wrote a poem for them. I read in Tamil. Okay, and then I translated also. So the name of the poem, vision for the youth. Okay, I vision for the youth. Uh, the, it goes. It goes like this. I climbed and climbed. Where is the peak of my dreams, my lord? I climbed, I climbed, and climbed. Where is the peak of my dreams, my lord? I ploughed and ploughed. I ploughed and ploughed. Where is the knowledge treasure, my lord? Where is the knowledge treasure, my lord? I sailed and sailed. Where is the island of peace, my lord? I sailed and sailed. Where is where is the island of peace, my lord? Almighty, Almighty, bless my nation with vision and sweat, resulting into happiness. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, my message to writers, sir. I, I just now I told you, I am influenced by one great human being who was born in this country. That is Tiruvalluvar. That Tirukkural Tiruvalluvar. This Tirukkalluvar, you know, this Tiruvalluvar. Oh no, one minute. The Tiruvalluvar. No, no, I am talking to him. Okay, let me finish the question. Then you write it. R writers should have uh, some sort of a discipline. Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> no. See what happened. This man, 2,200 is back. He is somewhere southern part of India. language tamil we don't know what religion he belongs to what culture he belongs to what country he belongs to every religion claims he belongs to them 
எவ்ரி நேஷன் பிளாங்ஸ் பிலாங்ஸ் டவுன் ஷி சேஸ் வெள்ளத்தனைய மலநீட்டம் மாந்திரதம் உள்ளத்தனை இது உயர்வு இட் மீன்ஸ் யுவர் எய்ம் யூ திங் பிக் யூ திங்க் பிக் அண்ட் டெஃபினெட்லி யூ வில் பி எ கிரேட் ஹியூமன் பீயிங் இஸ் அ வாட் அ ஃபிலாசபி well it all depends on one's mind you see the mind mind has to be powerful it has to when a person reads the book what is important you must be sensitive every book has got some message to give you know you should not be lost without with some some messages which is not uh, you are not concerned just now i told you there are 1330 uh, 30 couplets are there every couplet is very important some other right sometimes some pages very important okay so i personally believe it is a, it, it depends on your mind and it should distinguish what is important what is not important sir, yeah uh, yes yeah. uh, his excellency you are working with the bureaucrats as the advisor i worked i worked so we are working with the bureaucrats and yeah. as the president with the politicians mm. how many of them you really found <laughs> no i i will say that see i will put it like this i should work thousands i would have worked okay uh, because i worked uh, in defense ministry i worked in the uh, in the uh, in the space people uh, i worked in the department of science and technology all these places i worked but you know the answer to you, there is a inside story there when in your question is a inside story there 